the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. So you want to overclock the crap out of your KS0 Pro. You're going to need a few things. You're going to need thermal pads, 1.5 millimeter. I got Arctic TP3. You're going to need some thermal paste. Arctic MX6 is what I'm going to use. Copper heat sinks. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of the ones I'm using, but there's the, all kinds of different ones you can get on Amazon. You need some thermal glue and you'll need some tools. Okay, so you've got your <laughs> shroud kit off if you had one in the first place. If you didn't, then you're going to have to take off some side plates. I wanted to show you guys real quick uh, my friends at the meter box sent me these and I am going to try them on my KS0 and when I get my next KS0 Pro um, that I ordered the green version I'll try these on it and just to kind of see how well I can do with these um, little grills they're um, like little grates and they let air flow through so um, if you have your stock one on you will have to unscrew the four screws on each side to take the plate off and that's the easy part <laughs> next we're gonna have to take these screws off and you'll have to pry this plate open okay so it's really tough to see but I wanted to show you guys that inside you see these um, the fans that are mounted um, they take up room inside of this thing so I'm gonna mount these fans to the outside of the unit um, if you can see that takes up a lot of space right where you want your air flows. Um, see way deep in there um, behind the MOSFETs, um, those little rectangles. I don't know if you can see them, but um, I'll show you when I take the lid off. These fans block airflow. So I'm going to um, modify the Fruition's Designs Kit and I'm going to mount these fans to the outside and that might let some more airflow in. Let's let's give it a shot. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. OK, let's go ahead and get started on screwing these so we can get this plate off. So I've got all the screws unscrewed and usually people seem like they have a hard time prying theirs open. You can use like a little screwdriver or pry tool, but mine just seemed like it popped right open. Didn't seem like it was much trouble. Um, so maybe yours might be stuck on there more. Mine was not too bad. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't lose all the screws here. So there we go, there's the inside. So now I'm gonna turn this up to you so you can see it. I'm gonna point to the MOSFETs. So this seems to be causing a lot of trouble for people. Um, this is where we're gonna mount the copper heat sinks um, that I bought from, except like Amazon. Um, you can try all kinds of different ones. I'll give you these exact ones of the description of the video. Um, I don't get any money from like Amazon or anything like that. This is just what I'm using, I'll just show you. So we're going to glue these to these little MOSFETs here, and that should help with the temperatures of the MOSFETs so we can overclock better. But um, like I was trying to show you in the other shot, these fans do seem like they get in the way. I'm going to see if I can um, mount them, like I said, externally. We'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what we can do. Um, I'm going to pop the fans off now. Okay, so check it out. I, um, you know, obviously this is the original way where, you know, the grill's on the outside, screws are on the outside, and the fans on the inside. But all I did was, um, you know, flip it, flip it around, take these screws out. Um, I removed the grill completely, um, but you you could probably find some like nuts and bolts if you really wanted to mount the, the grill back on there, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really do much anyway. I mean, it's still a tiny little grill. So removed the grill and I ended up screwing the fan to the outside by just running the screws from the inside out. See how this is just like plastic. That's what the screws grab onto. So um, screws on the inside, mounted the fan on the outside and that should save us a little bit of um, room on the inside right where we need that airflow to go. Quick tip if you're gonna run the fans this way um, there is a little bit of a limited like stretch with the wiring on the fan so just make sure you're kind of pointing both wires in the same direction so when you remount the plate you've got enough slack on the wires to get back down to where you need to plug the fan in if you know what I mean. Um, this way should work out just fine. Um, so just just be mindful of um, how much room you have on your wire and which way you're pointing the wires when you mount your fans. Okay, so since it takes a while for the thermal glue to cure, I am going to go ahead and repaste the chips first because uh, it would be very difficult for me to take the hash board off um, after I have glued on the copper heat sinks to the MOSFETs, if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and repaste the chips with um, Arctic MX6. You can use whatever you want. This is what I'm using. Um, and then I'll show you how it's, it's really easy. There's, um, see these screws that have like a spring loaded look to them. 
Um, you're gonna take these out. I think there's eight of them. Um, so I'll take these screws out and then we'll take the hash board off and then we'll repaste the chips. Okay, we got all the screws out and this should just kind of pop right off. There we go, all right. It doesn't look too bad actually. That's what the chips look like pasted on your Ice River KS0 Pro. This paste doesn't look too bad really, um, but I'm gonna replace it anyway while I'm in here. So if you've been running yours for a while, you've been running it with like pretty hard overclocks on it, you haven't done this, you might wanna consider it. Don't forget your void and your warranty if you take these things apart too. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with um, just a little bit of paper towel, some rubbing alcohol. We're just gonna you know, wipe this stuff off and get the new stuff on. It's pretty easy. And then I'll show you just how to put the paste back on. So a um, little tiny bit of rubbing alcohol um, and paper towel, just clean all this paste off both the hash board and don't forget, you gotta clean it off the heat sink too. Okay, so I cleaned up the hash board, I cleaned up the heat sink, and now we're just gonna apply some of the Arctic MX-6 thermal paste. So you really don't need a lot. Um, in my previous videos, I put probably too much on, um, but everything worked fine, but you really just need a tiny bit, like less than a pea size. It's kind of hard to control how much you put on sometimes with this little syringe, but just be careful. Don't put too much on. That should probably be all you need right there. No more than that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit all nine of the chips Oh, sorry, 12 of the chips. Um, and then we'll we'll go ahead and re-screw down the hash board to the heat sink. So now we're just gonna flip it over and put it on the heat sink. And then we're gonna screw it back down, just like the way it was. And um, we're just gonna put these little spring-loaded screws back in. And it should be pretty easy. Just um, don't torque them down too hard and try to torque them down kind of evenly. Um, I've heard of people like torquing them down too much on one side and having like the chips on the other side run hot. So just try to make sure you're, um, you know, not tightening it down hard at one screw at a time. Um, you know, kind of like you know, tighten them down slowly but surely in a pattern. And then on your final pass, like tighten each one down all the way. Um, kind of like when you're putting a you know, rim back on a car, you know, like kind of do a little staggered star pattern maybe just so it's not like all really tightly down on one side and then the other side's like warping the board if you know what I mean. Um, so anyway, yeah, just put your screws back in. Okay, so we got all of our screws screwed back down. Now we're gonna peel off the thermal pads. Um, they look like they're in pretty good shape, but like while I'm in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them. So um, you want them as wide as that gold strip there. Pretty easy. Um, I've seen other people's like falling apart when they take them off, but mine stayed intact pretty good. So um, that's where you want the thermal pads. And like I said, I'm using Arctic TP3. So I'm just gonna cut them as wide as this and slap them on there. And if anybody cares, these uh, thermal pads are six and a half inch long by half an inch wide, just so you know. Top tip, use the package for a straight edge. All you guys with your crooked thermal pads driving crazy. <laughs> Boom, nice and straight. Thermal pads are done and looking pretty good. Okay, so just wanted to talk about the thermal glue real quick. The stuff that I am gonna leave in the link in the description, um, you get a, a lot. You don't really need barely any. It's very small amount that you need. This is good for MOSFETs, heat sinks, and it has good thermal conductivity. The only problem is it's got a 24 hour cure time. It says you can speed that up with a little bit of heat. I just wanna let you know there is a cure time and you don't need a lot. It says like um, 0.1 to 0.5 millimeters. So it's a very thin amount that you need. Now let's take a look at the heat sinks that we're gonna use. I am using Alpha Cool 6.5 millimeter by 6.5 millimeter copper heat sinks. Um, they originally come like this in the package, straight up and down. I ended up spreading mine out. All I did was just bend these copper plates out with a little mini screwdriver. And the reason why I did that is because there's other components here that get in the way of the airflow. So you can see there's your MOSFET right there. And then right behind it, another component gets in the way of the airflow. One, two, three, four, like this one's a little staggered off, a tiny bit. It would have been great if they would have staggered the MOSFETs in between these components to let the airflow through. Um, but that's not the way they designed it. So I'm kind of hoping that by spreading the fins out, it will catch a little bit more of the airflow that's going through. And I'm still hoping that taking the fans and mounting them so they're not in the way 
Um, now maybe you see what I'm talking about, like these fans would have gotten in the way of the airflow also. Um, so the internal fans are now out of the way of the airflow and air can flow over these um, kind of tall copper heat sinks. They're sticking up over these components. So, you know, I'm hoping that the airflow will catch these and um, provide better cooling. Now to spread them out, it's super easy. I mean, just take a little mini screwdriver and you just kind of put it in between, bend it out and just work your way through until it ends up looking like that. You can try it either way. You can leave them straight up and down, but I'm gonna try it with the fins bent out. I've got the copper heat sinks laid out here. I don't know if you can see on the bottom of this, but I roughed up the bottom just a tiny bit with some sandpaper. See how I scored it a little bit? Just a little bit of sandpaper just to score it so the glue will take. The other ones are like very smooth. I don't know if it'll make a, a big difference, but see how smooth that is compared to the other ones. I just don't want these falling off, you know? I haven't heard anybody really have massive problems with these falling off, but I just roughed it up with a little sandpaper that I had laying around the house. I think this is like 220 grit, no big deal. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get a little bit of this thermal glue and we'll spread it on there with this little tiny baby spatula that came with it, isn't that cute? Let's do it. I put some glue on there and I spread it very thin and very evenly and um, the, I pre-spread all of these fins. That way um, you don't try to bend them and break the glue. You know, we don't wanna break the seal on it. So um, I am putting the middle ones on first and then I'm gonna put the outer edge ones on next. Okay, so there's your copper heat sinks mounted to the MOSFETs. You can see how I fanned out the copper fins a little further on the outer edges because there's more room to bend them out. Um, hopefully catching a little more air that way. And then, um, I don't know if you can see, but um, in the front, tiny bit of white coming out. I put very minimal glue on these and you can still see a little bit of that glue coming out. So you do not need a lot. Just be very careful with how much you use. You don't want to get glue all over your um, hash board, even though it's non-conductive. You still want it to be clean and you still want that uh, heat transfer maximized. So, I mean, it's conductive glue, but copper is better. So um, just be conservative with your amount that you use on the glue. So now I think I'm gonna stick this thing in front of my OG KS1 and let the warm air from the OG KS1 help this cure. Like if you have less humidity and a little bit higher temps, like dry, warm air. So KS1 is perfect for that. So I'll stick this in front of there and then we gotta let it cure for a while and then I'll put it back together. And uh, I see you. <laughs> Sorry, man. I am gonna get you out from behind there. Same with you, Coastal Crypto. Same with you, Financial Failure. Um, I've got um, some new shelves that I'm putting up in the garage to try and um, organize and get these banners. I'm gonna mount them to the back of that. So anyway, sorry guys, got you blocked off, but um, you thought I was joking about warming this thing up with the KS1. OG KS1, thanks. Might as well use that heat for something. So <laughs> I'm gonna let it sit in front of that. One eternity later. Okay, the glue has cured. Uh, let it cure for 24 hours in front of the KS1 like you guys saw. And yeah, these are on there. Pretty solid, they're not. They're not going anywhere. So the next thing we need to do is just put our plate back on, plug the fans in and screw the plate back on. And then I will leave the end plates off, of course. And I'm going to, like I said, modify the shroud kit here and make room for the fans that are gonna be sticking up. So I'll have to cut a little uh, like slot out here to make sure that we have enough room for these fans to stick out and slide in there. Okay, quick note, um, this last copper fin right here, it is kind of getting a little bit in the way of these metal bars here on the back plate where the fans are. Um, when I originally was testing this out, it seemed like it was gonna line up just fine, uh, but I will have to bend this fin up just a tiny bit just so it can clear this metal here. All right, so we've got the cover plate back on with the fans. Um, there was plenty of slack on these wires to get the fans plugged back in. And I don't know if you can see, but way back in there, the fins are bent just right so they avoid where this bar touches the thermal pads. Another thing, uh, sorry, one more thing. In previous videos, I was blowing the air in from the power side. This time I'm gonna blow the air in from the ethernet side because the fins on the MOSFETs are sticking up from this side. And then um, I would kind of want the airflow to hit those first. 
Um, if you look from the other side, in previous videos I had air blowing in from the power connection side. Um, those components, those rectangular components I was showing you before, they kind of block those fins. So um, I'm gonna give it a shot um, with air blowing in from the ethernet side and blowing out through the power side. Pretty? No. Effective? Yes. <laughs> Okay, it looks like these modifications have been pretty successful. Chip temp minimum 38, chip temp max 45, board temp in 26, board temp out 41. So it's running nice and cool. And now I should have some wiggle room so we can hot rod this KS0 Pro. Um, I ordered another green KS0 Pro and it should be arriving mid-March or so. So I will be overclocking that one too. Um, if you want a green KS0 Pro, the um, special Caspa commemorative edition, they are in stock right now and my discount code is greater and you can get a discount on your order if you use that discount code on iceriver.io. So um, I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it helps you prepare so you can hot rod your KS0 Pro. And if it was helpful, hit the like button. Um, it does help my channel out when you do that. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see future content like this and don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.